Yeah, and so we're going to move straight into our Bible readings and our sermon. And I want to start by, by sharing with you or saying to us this. Um, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but often in the middle of winter, the one thing I'm looking forward to, the one thing I'm looking for in the middle of winter is summer. Um, I don't know if you, if you are like, like me, um, but that's very true for me. And I'm not sure why that is. Maybe it is because with summer comes warmer weather, it gets uh, uh, day, uh, comes earlier, it uh, gets dark, uh, dark later on in the day, and, and I love that. <coughs> um, and of course the warmth, the sunshine, and all the stuff that go with that. So often in the middle of winter, I am looking for summer. For me, there is joy in summer. The season of Christmas is also for me a season in which there is much joy. There is joy in the season. This season captures a sense of joy, a sense of delight, and that's why even when I find myself, myself in other seasons, when things are not going so great, I may want to remember this season. Now I know that for many people, this season is a season of struggle, of difficulty, of loneliness, um, of illness, but I want to say that if this season is like, like that for you, then maybe it is possible to still hold on to what this season can be, and that there will come a season again when the season will bring again joy to your life. But this season that we are in now captures for us, or let me put it this way, this season gives birth to joy. Without joy, the season would not be what it is for us. So let me turn to our two readings for today. And the first one comes to us from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 5 to 10. And often I am very glad, perhaps relieved, that my Bible is marked clearly. For sometimes... I would struggle to find some of these books. Uh, I don't know if you have the same or face the same challenge from time to time. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 5 to 10. <clears throat> Therefore, when Christ came into the world, Christ said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. Christ speaking to God. With burnt offerings and sin offerings, you were not pleased. Then I, Christ said, here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, my God. 
first, and then the author of the book continues, first he said, Christ, first Christ said, sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire, nor were you pleased with them. Though they were offered in accordance with the law. Then he said, Here I am, I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second. And by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Thanks be to God for God's word. And then we turn to our gospel reading. And today we're going to read from the gospel of Mark, from the gospel of Luke. Um, the gospel of Luke. And we're going to read from chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, from verse 39. Mary visits Elizabeth. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women! And blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. So, so far in God's word for today, and we thank God for God's word. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to move this over here. Um, and so, friends, this season that we are in, this time of the year, gives birth to joy. But trying to link those two readings with one another, I've made a discovery. I've discovered that there is joy in being obedient to God. There is joy in being obedient to God. Joy comes from obedience. And we find joy because Jesus makes it possible for us to be obedient to God. This is God's promise to us, that we too can be obedient. For obedience has become something bodily, something earthly. And because it has become that in Jesus we too can be obedient. And so I'm hoping that, that as I unpack it, that what I've just said may become a little bit more clearer as we go along. But let me, let me say this first. Perhaps you too have your story or stories of joy that that comes through obedience. A sense of joy because you have been obedient to God or to God's will. And obedience is more than just going through our rituals. I think when I look at uh, that reading in Hebrews, that that's the sense I get, that obedience as Jesus understood it, or understands it, is more than just going through the ritual. Um, it's more than just making amends when we have been wrong 
or when we've made a mistake. Obedience is something that must settle in our hearts, grounded in our hearts, in our inner, inner being. So I've tried to come up with a, a definition of obedience or being obedient to God. And, and I've come up with this. I'm not sure if I've captured it 100% or fully or, or got it right. Maybe next week I'll do a little bit better. But this is what I've come up with. Obedience is to live God's passion. Living God's passion is to get in touch with God's will. And that's what obedience is about. Living God's passion. So maybe you two have a story to tell about living God's passion. Being obedient to God. And we can be obedient because obedience to God is something that happens in our humanity. We don't need to be angels in order to be obedient to God. Obedience is grounded here in our humanity as we live our lives here on this earth. Living God's passion. Now here's a story from my life when I reflect on a sense of joy that comes from being obedient to God's will or living God's passion. Some of you may, may recall the early 90s when South Africa went through quite a change. A lot of stuff were happening at the time, 91, 92. And as a result of that, one of the things I was asked to do was to, with others, attend a meeting uh, with people from various organizations who were just unbanned <laughs> at the time. And so you could imagine my apprehension, my, my sense of, you know, not sure <laughs> what will happen my discomfort in many ways, my questioning. Um, a lot of stuff happening inside of me. But I knew this. I knew this. Part of God's passion is to reconcile people to God and to reconcile people to one another. That much I knew. And I knew I had to go. If I were to be obedient to God, I had to go to live God's passion. Reconciliation is certainly part of what God's passion is or is about. And so I went. I didn't do to do much, didn't change the world, but I went because I knew I had to be obedient and obedience meant for me to live God's passion, to give expression to that through my life, through my humanity, through me living in this world, on this earth. Living the passion, regardless of my objections and my misgivings and my uncertainty and all the stuff that go with that. Obedience is more than just a ritual. Sure, our rituals are important, especially 
the religious rituals that we love to engage in or engage with. But in themselves, they mean nothing if they are not grounded in a deep obedience to, to God. That's where they come from. They are rooted in living God's passion like Jesus did. But joy and obedience, or a sense of joy coming from obedience, is also about the fulfillment of promises. Unfulfilled promises can lead to pain and disappointment and hurt and many other things. But where promises are fulfilled, there we may find joy and obedience. Promises fills us with hope. If you keep on promising people and you don't make those promises come true, you rob them of their hope. Eventually they stop hoping. And so in a season like this, we must be very careful when we make promises so that we may keep people's hope intact. If you have had too many broken promises in your life, you learn to distrust and to give up on hope. God is very careful when God made God's promises. But the one thing that God did promise, and that the, the one promise that God has fulfilled, is that in our humanity we can know God, for God comes to us as a human being. Or in a human being. And the fulfillment of this promise is a source of joy, because we can see, because Jesus, because God is in bodily form, in in in. Um, God coming as a human being, we can now see Jesus in others. We too can now live for joy because when we come close to others, we too can see Jesus in them. And hopefully they can see Jesus in us. We can come close enough to know that Jesus is in others too. So if I have to sum up that Luke reading, it would be this. We too live for joy because of this embodiment of Jesus, that we can find Jesus in the lives of others. And especially in the lives of those who are in need. The Christmas story is, after all, a story of people who are on the margins of society being invited to witness the greatest event this world has ever seen. Isn't that amazing? It is the shepherds who are privileged to witness the angels singing. <laughs> it is the foreigners who are invited to come and to bring to this newborn child their gifts. And they, they, they come. And because of that, because God comes to us in our humanity, and that is what Jesus shows us <laughs> through his life, through who he is, we can find Jesus 
in one another. And so we have hope that we may find Jesus wherever we go. We have hope that people will be good because Jesus is in them. We have hope that we may be obedient because Jesus, the one who is obedient, is in us. And we have hope that God's promises will be fulfilled. Friends, what brings great joy to your life? What brings great joy to your life? If you were asked to make a list, what are the things? Who are the people? What brings great joy to your life? This season is a season of joy. The season in itself carries deeply within it a sense of joy. It's, it's, it's the very nature of the season. That's why one of the Advent candles is a candle of joy. But it carries within it a sense of joy that comes from obedience, from living God's passion. That we as human beings, as earthly people, as earthly as we are, as human as we are, that we too, like Jesus, can be obedient, can live God's passion. Obedience can be engraved on our hearts. And our obedience is more than the rituals that we go through each year this time. What are your Christmas rituals about? Two weeks ago I shared with you one of the things I'm going to do this year, and I'm doing it, is to buy a little Christmas tree and decorate the Christmas tree. That's my ritual for this Christmas season intentionally so. And I find joy in doing that. But I can tell you that, but I can tell you this, if it were not for the fact that I'm willing to live God's passion, if my rituals do not come from being grounded in my obedience to God, Decorating my Christmas tree would simply mean much less than what it means now. So what are your Christmas rituals? <laughs> what are you going to do this coming week and on Saturday? The meeting with family, the great meal, having a meal together, the giving of gifts, the singing of Christmas carols. And all, all that good stuff that we do. Let our rituals speak about, speak deeply about our obedience. Whatever it is we will be doing over the next week or so, friends, let's, let it come. Let it happen from a place of living God's passion. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we, we thank you for this season in which we find so much joy. May our music, our meetings, our talking, our togetherness, may everything we do over this Christmas season reflect that sense of joy that, that lies buried deep within this season. The very nature of this season is to bring joy. And may everything we do speak about that 
and captures that. But may we also discover that our joy comes from a place of obedience to you. May we discover that even in our humanity, with all its mistakes and its weaknesses and its tendencies to, to not do what is right, that in all of our humanity we can and we are called to be obedient, to know your will and to live your will. We are indeed privileged to have been called by you to this place of obedience. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.